Hey there, this video is gonna be all about crop sensors and crop modes. Everything to do with exposure, depth of field, noise levels, and all that kind of stuff. A little bit of a disclaimer up front here and that there's a lot of variability in terms of different manufacturers, different camera brands, and also different sensors even within the same camera brand. So we're gonna be speaking very generally about all the stuff, but there will be some variability amongst all the different cameras and sensors out there. Now, I just recently got the Sony a7 IV, which has an unbelievable crop mode. And I know some of you might be shooting on a camera that has a crop mode, or maybe you're shooting on a crop sensor camera, you know, like APS-C or Super 35, or maybe Micro Four Thirds. So the information in this video will definitely help clarify a lot of that stuff. And there's a bunch of misconceptions out there that you're told, especially when you're just getting into this. So have you heard before that full frame is better in low light? Have you heard that full frame gives you more depth of field? Have you heard that you need to apply the crop factor to the focal length and aperture? So we're gonna get into all that kind of stuff <laughs> and it's gonna get really nerdy, so I'm just warning you. But let's first start with an example. So that example there, I applied the crop mode in the a7 IV and you can see a couple things. First of all, the exposure was the same and it looks like a shallower depth of field. Now that's interesting because isn't full frame supposed to be better in low light? Isn't full frame supposed to give you a more shallow depth of field? Yeah, I know, there's a lot of things to talk about with this. So first thing we need to do is talk about exposure. Given a certain amount of light, there are gonna be three ways that you can control the exposure. One is the f-stop or aperture. The second one is the ISO, and the third one is going to be your shutter speed. So we'll start with f-stop. F-stop is the aperture of the lens, and the aperture is the opening in the front of the lens that allows light in. And how much light gets in will be controlled by your f-stop on your camera. So a lower f-stop number will actually allow a wider opening or larger aperture and will let in more light. When you raise the f-stop number, it'll close down the aperture and let in less light. There are a bunch of other things that this affects, one of which is the depth of field. So a lower f-stop, meaning a wider aperture, will have a more shallow depth of field. A higher f-stop or a smaller opening will create a deeper depth of field. We'll get into depth of field later. Now, one other, couple other things you wanna know about f-stop. One stop of light lets in twice as much light. So that's one thing you might have heard, right? Stops of light. Now your camera often will change those in fractions of stops, usually thirds of stops. But generally like this, this range right here, that's a pretty common range. 1.4 to two is one stop, two to 2.8 is one stop, four to 5.6 is one stop, and eight to 11 and so on. So those are one stops. Now they look like really random numbers there, but let's explain this a little bit. And if you don't know, I was a former math teacher, so we'll do a little bit of math. I said it was gonna get nerdy. Now you basically, to multiply from one stop to the next, you multiply by 1.4. So from two to 2.8, if you multiply two by 1.4, you'll get 2.8. Now, why is it 1.4? Well, it's roughly the square root of two, and that's where this all comes from. So it's not exactly, accurate, but these are cl as close as your camera is gonna get. All right, so we have one equation we need to work with here. The f-stop is equal to the focal length divided by the entrance pupil diameter. Okay, we know what f-stop is, that's the aperture. The focal length is the focal length of the lens, and the entrance pupil diameter is how wide it is when you look into the lens. All right, so with that all in mind, what's gonna happen here? Well, if we, for example, half the f-stop, that would double the entrance pupil diameter. And since the lens is roughly a circle, that means we need to square the doubling because the diameter is one dimension and the opening or the area is in two dimensions. So if we take that doubling and we square it, we'll get four times the amount of light for doubling the f-stop, or in this case, two times the light for 1.4 times the f-stop. Okay, if you didn't get all that, it's okay. Multiply by 1.4 or multiply by two, for two stops. But just keep in mind, between each stop, we're gonna have twice the amount of light. Now this is completely independent of focal length or any specific lens. So a 50 millimeter lens at f1.8 will let in roughly the same light as a 200 millimeter lens at f1.8. Now none of this has anything to do with sensor sizes. This is just stuff having to do with the lens. Now let's get on to ISO or ISO. I'll probably use those terms interchangeably. It's the sensitivity of the camera or the camera sensor. And this number is based on the amount of light hitting a square area of the sensor. More on this later. A higher ISO will be, make the image brighter. A lower ISO will make it darker. A higher ISO will have more noise. 
a lower ISO will have less noise. We'll get onto noise later. Now, just like with talking about f-stop, doubling or halving the ISO will be equivalent to one stop of light. So you might see in your camera a range like this, 100, 200, 400, and so on. When you double the ISO, you will double the amount of light or it'll be one stop of light. What about shutter speed? Well, if you're doing video, you're not gonna be changing the shutter speed, so it's not gonna have any effect on exposure. If you're doing photography, you're gonna be changing the shutter speed depending on the situation. But for video, we're gonna follow the 180 degree shutter rule, so our shutter speed is always gonna be double our frame rate. For example, shooting in 24 frames per second, our shutter speed will be one over 48, or more commonly in mirrorless cameras, it's one over 50. So that's not gonna change. Now, keep in mind, all the stuff that we just mentioned in terms of exposure, f-stop, ISO, and shutter speed, this is all independent of any crop factor or crop mode on a camera. So let's talk about depth of field and noise. All right, there was a lot of stuff to get through there just to get a base level, but you know, let's talk about depth of field now. And depth of field is one of those things that people obsess about and people get into full frame for that reason is to get a more shallow depth of field. Now, when we're talking about depth of field, we got to remember what a focus plane is. So if you're, you know, shooting a person like, you know, you're, I'm filming myself right now, the focus plane is just one plane or one point that's in focus. And usually it's gonna be focusing on the eye. So what's going on here is we have the depth of field. We have an area that's acceptably in focus because there really is only one plane that's in focus. And as I, you know, you look at my hand here, this is out of focus. And at some point it becomes acceptably in focus. So that region in front and behind the plane that's in focus is really the depth of field. And you can make it deeper or shallower. Now there are only three ways that you can control the depth of field. And this is all gonna come down to these three ways. The focal length, the aperture, and the distance to subject. Keep those in mind, those are the three things. Now the focal length, when you have a shorter focal length, you'll have a deeper depth of field. And if you have a longer focal length, you'll have a more shallow depth of field. For aperture, the higher f-stop, right, closing down the aperture will give you a deeper depth of field and the lower f-stop or the wider aperture will give you a more shallow depth of field. For distance to subject, when this is the distance from the camera to the subject, when you are further away, you'll get a deeper depth of field and when the subject gets closer to the camera, you'll get a more shallow depth of field. Now all this is based on the lens and the settings in the camera. It has nothing to do with the sensor size. We haven't talked about sensor size whatsoever, but actually let's start talking about that. So the depth of field on a smaller sensor will actually appear more shallow. That's right, I said that. The smaller sensor size will have a more shallow depth of field. And this is because of the circle of confusion. And I don't mean it's confusing, and that's why it's called the circle of confusion, but the circle of confusion is a whole other thing I don't wanna really get into today. But the circle of confusion is actually the same size no matter what kind of sensor you are you have. But when you are using a crop sensor or a crop mode, the pixels are actually more dense on the smaller sensor. And this way the out of focus area appears to be more out of focus. Let me show you an example. I don't have a crop sensor camera at the moment, so what I'm gonna be using is the crop mode on the Sony a7 IV to do my demonstrations. Here in this example, you can see I have the exact same settings on both of them. One's full frame, one's in Super 35 crop mode. And it's pretty obvious here that you can see that the Super 35 is much more zoomed in, of course, because we're using a crop mode. Now, it also appears to have a more shallow depth of field. And really the depth of field is the same, but it appears to be more shallow. And the reason is that you're more zoomed in. So the out of focus areas in the crop mode look more out of focus. So what do we do with all this? Well, we need to talk about equivalence and crop factors. To get equivalent images on different crop sizes and crop modes, we need to learn how to apply a crop factor. And so the basics here are you make sure you apply the crop factor to the focal length, you apply the crop factor to the f-stop, and you apply the crop factor squared to the ISO. Now, why is this the case? Well, go back to original equation. The f-stop is equal to the focal length divided by the entrance pupil diameter. So if we change the f-stop, we also have to change the focal length. Otherwise, the equation will not be an equation. Now, why do you have to square the ISO? Well, remember that the ISO is based on the amount of light hitting a square unit area on the sensor. So that way we have to square them because the focal length and the entrance pupil diameter are one dimension. So we square the crop factor when we apply it to the ISO. So as I said, we're gonna use the Sony a7 IV in the crop mode to do these demos. And the crop mode is a 1.5 crop, so very similar to an APS-C or Super 35 crop. And we're gonna compare that to the full frame. And we're gonna use this to show how you can get an equivalent field of view 
depth of field, exposure, and noise. So for this first example here, when I put it into crop mode, you'll see that it obviously crops in. So the first thing you probably think is, well, why don't we just move the camera back? So if you move the camera back, you will get the same image in terms of field of view and exposure, but what happens to the depth of field? Remember, there are three things that affect depth of field. The aperture, the focal length, and the distance from the subject. Well, the aperture and the focal length didn't change, but the distance did. So if you move the camera further back, given all things staying the same, you will have a wider depth of field. Now, moving the camera back will give you the same image, and other than the depth of field will be deeper, if that's something that matters to you. But if you're working in different systems like Super 35 or, or Micro Four Thirds, you're going to be thinking about in different focal lengths. So well, let's do an equivalence here. We're going to start with an example of a full frame image at 50 millimeters f4 ISO 400, and let's apply the crop factor. Remember, the crop factor gets applied to the focal length and the aperture, and the crop factor squared gets applied to the ISO. So 50 millimeters, we're going to divide that by 1.5, we get 33.3. So we'll set the camera at 33 millimeters in crop mode. F4 divided by 1.5 gives me 2.67. Well, we can't do that exactly, but we'll round the camera to 2.8. That'll be pretty close. And ISO 400, we're going to divide that by 1.5 squared. We get 177.8. So again, we can't get it exactly right, but we'll set the camera to ISO 160 because that's the, uh, the closest we can get. So take a look at the two images here. So as you can see, with a little bit of math and learning how to apply crop factors, we can get equivalent images on full frame and Super 35. So why don't we just use Super 35 for everything? Let's talk about noise. When we talk about noise, we gotta talk about ISO because I mentioned earlier that the ISO relates to the amount of noise, right? A higher ISO will give you more light to the sensor, will also in more noise, and a lower ISO will bring less light to the sensor but also have less noise. Now, in this example, we have the full frame sensor versus a Super 35, which is a 1.5 times crop. And if you square that number, because we're talking about square area, so 2.25, that's 1.5 squared, the full frame sensor will have 2.25 times larger area than the Super 35 sensor. So it will gather 2.25 times more light and result in less noise. Now I'm not talking about exposure here because the brightness or the exposure is independent of crop sensor size because we already talked about that before. But because the sensor is just larger, it will be gathering in more light. Now, in this example here, to get the same field of view, depth of field, and exposure, we had different ISOs. And because we had opened up the aperture wider to compensate for the shorter focal length, we had to then lower the ISO to keep the exposure the same. And by lowering the, expo the ISO, we had less noise, and that less noise became equivalent to the same level of noise on the full frame. All right, so why would you buy a full frame camera? Because I just showed you that you can get equivalent images in terms of field of view, depth of field, exposure, and noise with different size sensors by applying the crop factor. Well, there are limitations to this. First of all, lenses can only open up so wide. The aperture can only go down so low to let in more light. And also, you can only lower the ISO so far. So there are definitely limitations with a smaller size sensor. And there's limitations with a full frame sensor too, but you have a lot more flexibility. Now the larger sensor gathers more light at a given ISO, thus less noise. So at higher ISOs, you will have less noise on a larger sensor size. Of course, this will vary a lot depending on different tech and cameras, but generally speaking, that's gonna be true. One of the things that's really obvious about having a full frame sensor is you get a wider field of view, right? So there's there's not, there's not as much crop on there, so you can get a wider image, and that's very beneficial in some situations. Now let's get into the depth of field thing, which was one of the things we talked about at the very beginning of the video. Can you get more shallow depth of field with a full frame sensor? Absolutely, and this is because of the wider field of view. Now remember, one of the ways that you can get a more shallow depth of field, given a certain focal length, is to get closer to the subject with the camera. And because you have a wider field of view, it allows you to move the camera closer, thus getting you a more shallow depth of field. So it's not the full frame sensor that's giving you the more shallow depth of field, it's allowing you to move the camera closer to get a shallower depth of field. And at any given desired depth of field, at a given focal length, you have a lot more options with a full frame sensor.
what are the big takeaways here? I think they're really related to the misconceptions I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. The thing is that crop sensors do not affect exposure. And I think that's a big takeaway because you always hear full frame is better in low light. And to me, that means you can get a, 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 high, a brighter image and that's just not true. Full frame cameras will ha result in less noise at a given exposure. But if you have a crop sensor camera and a full frame camera, they will have the same exposure with the same settings and the same focal length and the same aperture and all that stuff. But it will have different amounts of noise. The other thing is that you can actually get equivalent images in different systems. So you can't just say, oh, well, you know, this is a micro four thirds camera, so it's gonna have less depth of field. Well, you can get equivalent images in different systems, but there are limitations. And you have to learn what those limitations are. You have to learn what are the pros and cons of every system. Make sure you learn your system. Don't worry about full frame equivalents and all that stuff. Just learn what you have. Learn how to use your system to get the images that you want. So what about speed boosters? No, I'm not getting to that. I got a whole video about that. Check out this video over here, guys, if you wanna learn all about speed boosters. I get really nerdy about it there too. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider hitting subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.